No nonsense gin drinking. All gin, no nonsense. Hello gin lovers, welcome back. I'm Bobby Freeman and today my friends we have an old friend on the channel and he goes by the name of Silent Pool Gin. However my friends this one is a limited edition which is called Rose Expression. Now many of you may remember way back near the beginning of the channel I reviewed the original Silent Pool Gin and I absolutely just fell head over heels in love with everything about this gin. It's just, it's just an example of how good gin can get. And not only that, also how beautiful a bottle can get. Because that, my friends, have a look at that little fellow. That is nothing short of a thing of beauty. And possibly, I reckon, the best looking bottle on the gin market in the whole world. So I am very much looking forward to getting stuck into this sort of slightly tweaked limited edition for you today. Now, for some reason, in the last few videos, I've uh, developed a strange habit of smacking my head really hard against this here shelf when I try the gin. I don't know why. I've, I've been in the studio for a while now. I've never done it before. And some people have suggested that maybe I should uh, remove the shelf and uh, sort of take myself out of harm's way. And that does seem like the logical thing to do. However, I like to live life on the edge on this channel. So to give the uh, show an air of trepidation, I'm going to leave it exactly where it is. And if I bang my head, then so be it, my friend. Because that is an example of the kind of risks I take for you guys. You're welcome. Right, I think that's all the admin done. I've got no patrons to mention today. So my friends, let us crack on with it. So then my friends, let's get the old top off. Oh, hang on a minute. No, 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 no. I haven't read about it on the website. Have I? God, this, it was all going so well, wasn't it? Now that's an example of where most YouTube channels would cut a mistake like that out and not put it in the video. Not here on my channel, my friends. It all stays in. So my... Oh, God damn it. Yep, that will stay in as well. <laughs> come on, Bobby. Come on, Bobby. Sort it out. We'll get there in the end. We'll get there in the end. So, my friends, it is from England, this gin, so no accent required today. I'm just going to delve straight in. Distilled with a unique rose tea infusion to create a distinctive yet delicate rose flavour. Rose Expression Gin shares the Silent Pool DNA in terms of its complexity and refreshingly individual character. However, the core recipe has been refined to complement and enhance the rose notes. Now this ah, is interesting because I don't really think I'm a big fan of the rose flavour. I know that old Hendrix over there puts rose in their gin and I'm, I'm never sort of a biggest fan of it. But let's, just, let's not have any preconceptions because I, you know, the, the people at Silent Pool know exactly what they're doing. So you never know. They might have sort of used it in a delicate way in the same way that Steve the bartender puts grapefruit in his uh, threefold gin, which is uh, up there. Uh, I don't reckon to write grapefruit, but he used it in such a way, it just to give an essence of it and it actually worked. So who knows, they might have done some sort of witchcraft and wizardry like that. Some of the original botanicals, such as pear, bergamot, kubeb and cardamom, have been increased while uh, lemon becomes the leading citrus. Now then, this is an interesting one because it does have a cork. However, it is a glass cork, which not many gins have. Have I got any others with a glass cork at the moment? I don't think I have. This was certainly the first one I encountered. So I don't know whether to do the cork test or not because I don't think a glass cork makes a sound. Let's do a, a sort of a uh, sort of a, a tentative cork test just in case. The tentative cork test. So do we get a squeak? I doubt it. Nope. Absolutely nothing. We'll go for the pull. Oh. <laughs> No, I don't think that really counts as a cork test. But anyway, it was worth a try. So let's get them in the old glass and see what the old sniff is like, or the smell is like, to be accurate. I do like to use the English language. So here we go. Nose in the old glass. Breathe out first. Oh, I just watch out for that shelf. Oh, man. Wow. Oh, it's been a while since I've tried the original Silent Pool, to be honest but I tell the what. That, my friends, smells bloody delicious. It's extremely fruity. Is it rosy? Is there a bit of... I'm not really... I'm getting more kind of bags of... They mentioned pear in there and bergamot. I'm getting sort of a sort of a fruity essence, which I'm guessing is probably the pear, which is... To be honest, I didn't know they put that in the original one, but um, the main thing which I love about... Um, Silent Paul is because they put honey in there. Now I can't really smell any of the honey, but I think that usually comes out in the taste, which, which leads me neatly on to, well, the tasting. So let's get a bit of the old 
tonic in there, shall we? And see how we go. So, tonic in. Silent pool, rose expression with the pink copper ribbon, I say. Cheers. Oh, man. Oh, oh ho, ho, ho. Wow. Wow, wow, and wow again. There's very few other words I can use to describe that. The, f oh, God, the flavors in there. Hang on, let me another go. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Oh, yes, there it is. That, oh, and relax. Calm down, Bobby. Let me try and condense those noises into sort of audible um, words. It's, it's basically, you can tell you've got that original core recipe in there because you've got this beautiful sort of, sort of swirling sort of, uh, uh, sort of ball-like storm of lemony sort of citrus flavors, but there's like sort of a, a core sort of uh, sweet uh, sort of honey essence, which is kind of condensed at the bottom and gives a base to them all. And if you can find a more pretentious way of describing that, I will give you some cash because I don't think that it's, it's possible. But honestly, it's something, you know, I, I like to, I like to sort of just say what's in my mind, sort of paint a few pictures in the air here. And sometimes I may go a little bit pretentious like this, like an interpretive dance teacher and sort of wave my arms around as I discuss the flavors because I believe it helps me to do so. But seriously though, it's, it's, it's an absolute, you can tell, I always say, you can tell when someone has poured love and passion and a lot of time and thought into the gin and you can kind of feel every single drop of it in there. It's truly spectacular how they balance these sort of flavors together and you can kind of discern them all. You get that sort of fruitiness from the pear, but coupled with the working just perfectly balanced with the citrusy notes. I'd say the citrus is kind of, two notches above the sort of the fruity notes but the but what really does it for me is that beautiful sweetness of the honey now i did have i got it here still the apiary gin i think i took it back in the house don't think it's here and um, i did a gin i reviewed a gin that was made with really heavy honey recipe called uh, the apiary gin uh, from a very small distiller here in england and that was massive on the honey now silent pool go very subtle on the honey. It is in there, and I know a lot of people don't like their stuff that's too sweet, but they've used this, in a, the honey, in, in a way that it just gives you a beautiful essence without overpowering it. So the big question is, is there this rose flavor in there? Let me have one more go. <laughs> yes, there is an element of rose in there, but again, thank goodness, and I kind of had confidence in them anyway, it's used, in a very, very delicate sort of way. It's almost sort of like a, a fleeting shadow of rose in there. It's like they've just sort of gently sort of wafted a bit of rose dust, but then just, just, just caught a tiny bit of it. It's just collected a kind of a, a hint or kind of a sort of a, a distant memory of it. And to me, it creates a kind of an adventure. There's so many things going on at so many levels and it makes it a, a genuinely Fascinating gin to drink. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man alive. I had every confidence in Silent Pool to be honest. Um, but I was a little bit um nervous about the element of the rose. And I suppose the big question is: do I prefer it to the original? I think if I was pushed, it's it's an excellent gin, but I think if I was pushed. I would say I still personally prefer the original, but that's not to say that this one is not a great gin. And if you love that rose sort of flavor, then my friends, you are going to love it. However, my friends, are you going to love the price? Well, that depends to be honest, because this one will cost you, uh, in fact, that they all, at Silent Pool, they all cost 37 pounds, which equates to about 47 dollars or 40 euros and personally as i said for the smaller distilleries the sort of the more sort of uh clicky ones that are just sort of starting off i don't mind uh raising my bar a little bit so anywhere between 30 and 40 is absolutely fine however i do think as much as i love silent pool gin i think it's a little bit pricey just a little bit pricey because they are I'd say they're becoming kind of more mainstream now. So I, th I would like to have brought them to have brought it down to route the sort of 30, 32 pound mark, something like that. But 
not ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. It's not off the scale like some of the ridiculous gins like this. Uh, what's that crazy one? Oh yeah, the uh, uh, what was it called? The Fallen Angel one up there at fifty pounds. Absolutely crazy. So it's a little bit more than I perhaps feel comfortable for, but not excessively more. So uh, I'm I'm sort of reasonably happy with that. So all in all, my friends, to sum up this. If you've never tried Silent Pool, don't worry if you can't get a hold of this limited edition one, you'll definitely be able to get a hold of their uh, original one, because I know I've seen that many, many places in the world where I've been. And it is truly just a spectacular gin, and one you sh I, if ever I was going to recommend a gin to have on your shelf, Silent Pool would be the one. I recommend you go out, buy them immediately, and just uh, gaze and sort of uh, bask in the beauty of the bottle and uh, guzzle the old stuff down the neck as well. So my friends, I hope you've enjoyed this video today. If you have, as always, don't forget to subscribe to my show, press the little like button on the video and the bell icon so you get a little notification when I bring my new videos out. And if you wanna support the show, head over to my Patreon page or just click the little join button below this video. But until next time, guys, take care, stay safe. Thank you to all my patrons and supporters and keep drinking the gin. Mm. Oh. <laughs>